Hey, welcome everyone. In today's video, I'm going to discuss data objects and data stores. It had dawned on me after a question from a fellow practitioner that I haven't really covered data objects and data stores in the previous videos. Data is important in BPMN. Data to our processes is important because data is needed to complete activities. Data is also generated or created based on the actions we take. Modeling the inputs and the outputs or data transformation is a key component when describing our business processes. Take a moment and ask yourself this, what does your company provide to its customers? Does your company provide electric vehicles to customers? Does your company produce business intelligence assessments? Does your company provide consulting services or even healthcare? Something tangible is consumed by your customers or the business wouldn't exist, right? That tangible something is linked to the data in our processes. At the 10,000 foot level, some of the process data that we will talk about may not be seen. Only when it's delivered to the customer, in this example, would we see data. But if we broke apart one segment of the business model, we may see the capability to deliver electric vehicles to three different customer types. We know we have a series of processes, people, technology, robots, material, etc. needed to deliver it, but we really don't see all the details, nor should you in this model. But the data is there, and that is why data objects are so important with BPMN and modeling business processes. Let's take a closer look at what I mean by this. If we were to piece together all of the processes or core processes and that data needed to deliver um, electric vehicles, um, you could quickly see that there are a set of core processes, or in this case, sub-processes, um, to the organization's business model, which consume and produce data in order to deliver or provide something to its customers. A simple example can be seen in our electric vehicle manufacturing process in which a data object is being consumed or produced from one sub-process to the next. Data is also needed from external processes and, and in some cases, or in this case, suppliers providing the raw material to produce components that go into the electric vehicle. Only at the very end do we see that the electric vehicle is delivered to its customers. For today's video, we're going to keep it simple, but I just wanted to share with you the importance of data. We'll use a simple HR process to discuss data objects and data stores. The first notation we're going to talk about is data objects. On the screen, I have three, the three data objects listed. Uh, we have data objects, uh, the, which, the generic um, notation in which it can be um, used when information is either produced or consumed by an activity. Data inputs and data outputs provide a specific meaning and use. As the name implies, data inputs depicts information consumed by the activity and data outputs depict the information considered um, or in essence produced um, by the activity. The fourth notation that we'll cover today is the data store. Data stores are used by the activities to create, read, update, or delete data. The activities depicted within a process can retrieve information from data stores or update data stores. Data stores can essentially, essentially within your organization, you know, warehouse databases, their supply chain system databases, passenger reservation databases, HR systems, and so on. Essentially, data stores, they live outside of our process, meaning that the data is constantly being updated and is available and may modify our processes based on the nature of the relationships to a process or performer. So let's walk through an example of how you could use data notations in your processes. Unless you're running a small organization, your HR department is probably pretty busy. Orientation of new hires commonly occurs in which an HR representative is probably handling multiple new employees. We illustrate how an employee 
creates a record and stores it in the HR database um, through the completion of an activity. We use that data association to connect between the activity and the data store, indicating that there's employee information or the employer's record uh, of an employee is being updated in the database. We also use the data association to connect the sequence flow and the data object. In this example, we use the data output notation and connect the data association to the sequence flow. We also use the standard looping activity notation to represent that the activity continues to occur until all employee paperwork has been completed. Each time it's completed, it generates a tax form for that employee. This is how we can use the collection attribute as depicted on the screen for data objects in your model. This simply means that there are multiple objects, multiple data objects, in this case, tax forms that are being generated every time that activity is completed. Now let's walk through this process using Trisotex animation feature. We can see that the token is being passed um, at the start event through the sequence flow and the activities. One thing you'll notice is that the token does not go through the associations connected to data stores or data objects. Thanks for joining in today's video. If you like this video, do me a huge favor and hit that like button and subscribe for more content.